Hello everybody and welcome to Star Story The Horizon Escape. Now this is a game which is a uh, well it's a little text based adventure I think is probably the best way to say it with a little bit of side of sort of side scrolly combat to it and all of your choices have consequences so this is going to be hilarious no doubt for me because I will probably choose all of the wrong ones. So, let's jump in, shall we? Start a new game. This is this is the hero, dude. So, the great age of space exploration is almost over. Sector Nali, the last uncharted corner of the galaxy, lies hidden in the sphere of a dark nebula. You, Van Klik, an aspiring explorer of the Space Archaeological Society, were sent on a mission into the unknown to uncover an ancient artefact. Your ship completes the warp jump to the other side. And... Here's our ship! Flying through space. Okay, so, so Random Blue Head is now speaking to us and saying, Good day, Commander. So I'm going to say, uh, Hi there, you bot. Oh, by the way, can everybody hear me okay? Just let me know how the sound is. It should. I don't generally change it that much between streams, so it should be okay, but just in case. So I'm going to say, Hi there, you bot. You must be experiencing consequences of the hyper jump. No worries, there's enough time left before we arrive on Horizon. I'm going to say Horizon. The blue face replied, Yes, I may remind you, Commander, that this mission was assigned to us by the Intergalactical Cosmo Archaeological Council. I'm going to say, Whoa, 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 girl, hold on. Intergalactical Cosmo Archaeological Council? Um, yes, you studied there for some time and you work for them. Hmm. To search for the ancient Generation database. It was used to store all humanity's knowledge and secrets on Generation's ships. We found out that one of them has crash landed in this system. Thank you guys for saying that it sounds good. I'm going to do some calibrations. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask them, Commander. Okay, I'm going to ask who she is. I'm V3R DANA, Artificial Intelligence Model Icarus Build 8.4.9. Oh. Too many details. I have been your personal assistant for as long as 26 human years. Uh, So where are we? So I can call you Dana, right? We arrived in the Gnarly system in the Dark Zone sector a few terrestrial hours ago. Judging from the surface scan, the system has six planets, of which only one has an atmosphere suitable for living. So what's going on? Why are we here? Commander, you were planning this expedition for months. Don't worry, you may still be experiencing the consequences of the hyper jump. Yeah, good way to explain it all away. It was all the hyper jump. That's why I don't remember anything. Okay, so let's do some calibration. I've per I've prepared your personal version of the empirical personality governing operator, or ego for short. I love it when the uh, they purposely. Like, make up words to make the acronym say something. Ego scans answers and predicts their consequences. Ooh, a future telling device. Very handy. In short, the latest version of Ego will save your... Well, how should I put it? You will see that different answers will affect the development of your personality and abilities. But you... Nothing has changed. Vadana responded. That is because you've not been given any choices yet. I will now ask you a question. How do you get things done, Commander? I'm going to say... Co-op... I'm going to... This is probably going to make you all sick, but cooperation, collaboration, and mutual aid a kind-hearted person will always receive support from. Vadana continued. I believe you get the idea, Commander. I must point out that there will be choices without visible consequences and questions with no obvious answers. 
She paused for a bit and then carried on. For instance, you're locked in a room with two or more people who are about to fight each other over some food. You can side with one of them, find a way to help both of them, or make sure you stay out of the fight. See, I think that I should try and help both of them. While you were trying to help them, they wounded you and killed each other. Ah, not the ideal con uh, outcome that I was looking for there. Ego is unable to predict, predict certain consequences or foresee several moves ahead, but it's good at spotting those special choices when they arise. Pay attention to such situations. They affect your destiny. Okay, I think I got it. Part zero, enter horizon. Why is it part zero? Why can't it be part one? It's a prologue. Carol Robinson says a fortune or time machine would explode if I touched it. Probably. Wilfred would get the food for himself. Okay. So, filter out important events or view the complete event log. I think I'm going to view the complete thing and hope that it's not too long. Okay, so AI successfully tested the ship systems. Rats escaped the research lab. Commander calibrated the navigation system. Commander spent 47 hours by the system module playing HL Half-Life 3. <laughs> um, Captain was practicing a game of stare down all day. He's planning to take part in a yearly tournament. Lost 97 fights to a practice bot. Engine malfunctioning. AI adjusted the position. Sorry, the positon storage ring. Day 400. Commander defeated the practice bot finally. Replay the fight. Okay, so this is how we fight in this game. So at the moment I can only fight with my fists. You don't even have to click on the bot, you just you just go and punch it. Okay, continue my journey. And I now have a blaster gun. Yay! A widespread mod of the default blaster deals some damage but gets overheated quite fast. Oh, so we've got to watch out for overheating. You finish watching the replay. Haha. -ha. Check out how I'm going to show that practice bot what I'm made of. Load the next difficulty. Badana warned you. Careful, Commander. The next opponent has increased your ability. Okay. Let's replay the next fight. So this time I'm allowed to blast him with my blaster gun. Yeah! Oh, that worked well. Oh, I see. So I have certain turns until it overheats. So I have certain turns I can't use it. Ah. Uh... Wilfred says, it seems clever beating the robot, but it's learned that punch and all the other... So it's learned that punch and all the other robots learn it too. <sighs> now it knows my tricks. Okay, you finished with the next replay. That was too easy. I'm ready for the toughest one now. Vadana replied, Commander, the next practice bot deals fire damage. Did you use a portable shield module? Take the shield module. Temporarily protects the user by reducing incoming fire damage, but it receives double damage from shock. Okay. Don't forget to use the shield module now. You can use them out of battle. Okay, I'm prepared. Uh, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. Quick, shield me. Shield me. I assume it's turn-based combat. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. I didn't even have to use my nano bandage. Madonna inquired, would you like me to heal your wounds? Uh, yeah. And I got some insight, apparently. Oh, okay. Madonna woke you up from your sleep. Commander, the navigation system has crashed. We need you to fix it. Do you want me to remind you of how to set it up? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I, I think... Okay, so Vardana recited the manual. The navigation system consists of a tech cell, a Gauss megascope, and a scientific module. Please remember that all components must be operational before the system can be launched. I get that. What's next? Vardana went on, you need to use the action planner to repair the navigation system. It will help you plan your repairs. Keep in mind, however, that you need to choose the right components in the right order. Okay. I'll give it a go. So it must have a primary control cell. Right, 
So a composite textile, a computing element used in various electrical devices. Or a dangerous substance that's capable of incinerating practically anything solid. Well, it sounds like that one. Main measurements are read by the means of... A Gauss megascope, a device used to orientate in space. Or a hack virus used to defeat systems and electronic logs. I'm going to go with this one. The data is transferred to a dangerous acidic solution that destroys metals, or an important part of many complex systems. You don't even want to know how it works. It's rocket science. Yay! Excellent, Commander. The action planner will help you in various scenarios. It will allow you to solve all sorts of problems in the future. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Full speed ahead. Step by step. Problem solving. Okay, we carry on on our journey through space. I love the way the planets are drawn and stuff. I love the cartoony style to this. Ahoy, Civic 42. Verdana freaked out. Commander, an unidentified ship is approaching. Your orders? She seems kind of happy. Uh, we can send them a greeting signal. Maybe we'll be able to contact them. Or send an incendiary torpedo. I'm not in the mood for chat. I think. I think that's a bit over the top. Aside from un some unintelligible static, the ship returned no signal and continued to move in your direction. Uh, there's no other way to, but to annihilate the ship. Kaboom! The unidentified ship began to disintegrate. It became clear, though, that the ship had been severely damaged already. Badana exclaimed, Commander, we need any and all data about the system. Could you explore the ship? All right, you would teleport onto the ship and... Tear everything to shreds, find out if I'll be able to save someone, or find out what kind of ship it is. I will find out if I am able to save someone. Um, we found some smoke, some corrosion grenades, and a lock, couple of lockpicks. Badana seemed to be excited. Excellent, Commander. Would you like to find out more about that equipment you just got? I do not insist, of course. But just in case, so you don't kill yourself. You understand, I suppose. Um, okay, explain it to me. Select an item you want to hear the details about. A smoke bomb. One bomb can temporarily disorientate an enemy, thus giving you time to react to their onslaught. Corrosion grenades. Efficient at destroying enemy armour. Armour is shown in green on your combat visor. Okay. The lockpick can be... Uh, don't use it as a weapon. On the other hand, this device has a smart lock picking system built into it. It'll help you deal with any mechanical lock, but only once. Then you'll have to find a replacement, okay? And the small blaster. Basic weapon that deals medium damage. However, it takes quite a bit of time to cool down, so you'll not be able to fire it uninterruptedly. Also, it has an ammo limitation. It uses ammo that requires a power source to recharge. Unfortunately, we do not have one on board. <laughs> oh, good! All right, I'm ready. Shh, Commander. Something is jamming my transmission. And V3R, Dana, Vadana, switched off. You would have to figure out what's the matter yourself. A derelict ship and no one's in sight. Red light flickers ahead as if an alarm has been turned on. I had the feeling something has happened on board long before my arrival. Mm, of course we're going to continue exploring. What's all this then? You entered a room with a small vault shielded by a force field. Walls were covered with control panels of various sorts. The force field was guarding a weird device. That looked like your first chance to loot something. You checked an old console behind the force field. A hunched figure was sitting in the chair next to it. Hmm. I'm going to carefully approach from the side. As you were carefully sneaking around, you tripped over some cord and fell down. Not hard enough to receive any damage, but still not so pleasant. You heard strange footsteps in the hallway. Um, I'm going to say, wow, a very interesting technology. Oh, I found a hack virus. Very nice. Someone has come for you. Someone big and very evil. The visors began to beep. Dangerous enemy protected by a layer of armour. Use corrosion weapons advised. 
because you were messing around with the tech, the enemy found you. Oh no! I got interrupted by, oh, I got distracted by a shiny thing, basically, and uh, the enemy found me. Evening, Jaradan. Welcome to the stream. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask if we can make a deal. Well, apparently not. Okay, uh, corrosion grenade. We need to get rid of this armor that he's got on. And then we could, uh, mm, use smoke, stun for three turns. I stun him while the corrosion is taking his armor out. And then once his arm is taken out, we'll start shooting him. So I'll just punch him for a turn. Oh, that worked well. Victory! I got a corrosion phaser, an odd alien weapon that seems to use chemical slime as ammo. Pierces enemies' defences over time. Cool. With a screech, the force field dropped. The bot must have been maintaining it. This was your first archaeological reward on this mission. Great! Unknown artifact. A golden disc with text slots for unknown cable types. Probably Vatana, sorry, Vadana can help you analyse it. Hmm. Very cool. Wow, a container. It's blinking with strange red lights. It's a trap. Oh, I can use the hack virus. So even though I was like looking for shiny things, it's actually paying off. I can analyze trap and attempt to crack it manually. No, I'm going to use the hack virus. The container was rigged with explosives, but you were able to bypass the traps. However, the hack virus got some of the container cells jammed, so there was absolutely no chance for you to reach them. Hmm. Take the loot though. So we've got two universal translators, a corrosion grenade which will replace the one I just used, and three Mark I shield modules. Yay! So, gotta be careful about shock with that one. The ship was in ruins, an idle security robot was docked in the corner. So I can check the teleporter or kick the robot. Mm. I'm going to kick the robot. Oops. Probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, more corrosion grenades. Ow. Ow. Stop hurting me. Corrosion phaser. I want to corrode him as much as possible. Yay, he's dead. And I got two pieces of iridium for that. The destroyed bot joined the trash on the ship. It seemed to have been guarding something similar to a teleportation device. Your own teleport was still jammed. The teleportation device had an input slot of some kind beside it. You looked at the artifact you acquired earlier. It's the key to the teleporter! Eureka! A wild idea flew through your mind. As you put the artifact into the slot, the teleport came to life. The ship experienced a slight thump. You spent a few minutes typing in your ship's coordinates. After that, you ejected the artifact and stepped into the teleport. Back to the ship! So the first thing you did when you got back was ask Vadana about the artifact. She replied, no idea, Commander. There's nothing in our archives on the origin of such items. For sure, this is a rare discovery. Um, I could ask Vadana about the resources I found on the ruined ship. Well, judging by its molecular structure, this is Iridium Commander. It's used in scientific research as a long-acting fuel for super compact reactors. One such shard is enough to... Vadana went into detail, but you were quite tired, wanted to get some rest. Oh, I'll just lie down, take a nap. Floating through space, taking a nap. Commander, we set out on this mission to conduct research on the Humanity Generation Database lost somewhere in this sector, Vodana stated. Apart from that, would you like to specify a side goal for the record? Um, Shall we go with friendliness again and meet new people and make new friends? I think we should. Commander emphasised the importance of communicating with the inhabited planets of the Dark Sector. Vodana was adding data to the scientific report. 
And a corrupted record, Commander, Vatana called you out again. Seems like the record on your personal data is corrupted. Hmm. A simple questionnaire, Commander, said Vadana. Which of these archetypes would you pick as a role model? A few seconds later, she added, Commander, please, not like last time, when you wrote 8,000 times, I don't know, in a 7,000 word survey. Who would make a... S what evil person would make a 7,000 word survey? Seriously? I don't think I want to be a villain or a famous athlete. I don't think I really want to be a messiah. Why don't we go with famous explorer? A note reads, the commander does not like filling out questionnaires, which is why his profile is full of descriptions of exaggerating personality models he has always wanted to look like in the eyes of others. Very well. Where are we off to now? Oh, look, it's a planet. You almost reached the planet horizon when the artifact you discovered earlier started emitting an unnatural dark green light. Ooh. Um, so I'm going to call for Dana. Vadana was alarmed. Commander, our ship is cutting through a powerful gravitational current. We're being drawn to the planet. The planet was still quite far away, but something was drawing you to it. Was it the artifact? Uh, we can eject the weapon bay of the ship to escape, triple the power on the rear engines, or order to head for the planet. It's your main quest anyway. Yeah. The ship was getting drawn to the planet even more. Sensors went mad. The hull was about to be crushed by some unknown anomaly. Madonna prepared a multi-dimensional field backpack and some equipment. You had time to specify your choices. Uh, weapons, gadgets, or medications? Weapons. Multi-dimensional field backpack. A special backpack that allows to store items in the 4th, 5th, and 6th dimension regardless of their weight and mass. Could that be a joke? Maybe. So I've got an ignition grenade, painkillers, copper, and carbon. Okay. Targets with no protection. So we need to um, get through their armour before we started uh, lobbing grenades at them. But we've got things to get through people's armour, so it's good. Um, a limited amount of supplies and essential injections to adjust to new climates. Weapons were important for self-defence. Lock the escape pod shaft, because that's the only thing we can choose. Oh, we're on fire! No! Boom. So as you were closing upon the planet, your ship began to shake horribly. Your thrusters shut down while reality started to bend. You felt as if you were getting flushed down a wormhole. Something was going terribly wrong. Systems at max, screeched Vedana. Okay, you can activate the escape pod. You activated the, es uh, sorry, the escape pod ejection mechanism and clung onto your chair. I think it's clung, not clinked. Uh, the turbulence was so powerful that you almost passed out, but suddenly everything stopped and you felt a slight electric shock at your fingertips. Ooh. Oxygen was running low in the escape pod. Horizon was just below you, waiting. It was time to choose. What were the options? A transmission arrived a few seconds ago, a request for help with direct coordinates. It could be a trap, or it could be someone really in distress. On the other hand, you could attend to these matters later and follow the coordinates of your crashed ship. Maybe it was still in flying condition. Um, I'm going to go and follow the SOS signal because A, I'm a friendly kind of guy and B, I want to be a famous explorer and, you know, exploring new stuff is better than going back to old stuff, so. You activated the thrusters using all what was left of your fuel. The escape pod lunged down towards the planet, roaring as it was entering the atmosphere. Exactly. Right then, a memory of what happened next came back. The desert surrounded you, left, right, ahead and back. It was everywhere. You know the definition of a perfect planet? A planet without a desert. The shock absorbing, sorry, absorbing fluid failed and the parachutes didn't open completely. That was why the collision with the surface was so hard. Mm, get out of the damage pod as soon as possible. No, check on my equipment. I'm going to be, you know, careful and safe about that. While doing the checkup, you notice the suit's combat module was disabled. Suddenly, you get out of the capsule. 
A creature resembling a shrimp was crawling a few yards away towards you. It had an enormous sharp toothed mouth and six huge green eyes. Ooh. Uh, maybe it wants to be friends. A silly assumption. The good old one sniffed, opened its mouth wide and charged in your direction. The accompanying shrieking could hardly be called friendly. Defend myself. Okay, so. We could put a shield module on. How much is it? It's got five health and three armor. So I could use my corrosion phaser for one charge. Oh, it corroded me. I could punch it. Is it dead? Yay! Continue my journey. So I got a Tooth Fairy blueprint. Used once a blueprint that contains a scheme for creation. Everybody has a plan until they get hit with this thing. Okay. Success! Finally you got a chance to take a break. Vodana remained silent. Apparently something was wrong with the portable modulator. You found a basic supply kit that will suffice for a while. I'd rather leave them here. Someone may need them more than I do. Hmm, now this is a hard choice. Chat, what do you think? Do you think that I should take the supplies or do you think that I should leave them for someone else? Just gonna give you a minute. Take, I've got one wanting to take them, one wanting to leave them, one wanting to take them, one wanting to hit them with an incendiary torpedo. I'm not entirely sure that's a choice, Wilfred. Okay, well, I, chat is extremely selfish, so we're going to take the supplies. So we've got some sulfur and some iridium. Part one, best intentions. So what's that up ahead? So I can look at all these things. My escape pod, maybe some jam vaults can be unlocked. Oh, right. I can lock pick it, okay. Chain ivy, a weird tree that has great resistance to fire. Some rare elements can be harvested from it. Bloody telekinetic con conducts electricity really well, was the reason that a primal alien race discovered electricity in its stone age. Razor Eye, a dangerous but possible source of iron, got its name from the times of colonisation of the planet Jin. Okay. Why don't we try and lockpick that open? So I got an armour module mark one from that. Keramite from that. Copper from that. And iron from that one. Cool. Mm, continue my journey. Well, I was useful back there. You managed to activate Vodana. She seemed a bit grumpy. I'm picking up a gravitational anomaly just a few hundred metres from the ground, all around the planet, Vodana exclaimed. But the gravity on the planet itself seems to be normal. I'm going to ask, uh, can you run more tests? The gravitational anomaly would stop us from leaving the planet on a regular vessel. We have to research this matter or else we're stuck here, Vodana went on. The SOS signal is coming from a structure just ahead. As Vodana said, you were stuck on the planet. We decided that following the SOS signal would definitely bring you closer to civilization, and with that, bring you closer to finding an answer on how to get the hell out of here. Search the surroundings for anything useful. You looked around to find some scrap. It may prove useful later. Sadly, drew some unwanted attention while at it. You had to fight back. Oh dear. Um, I don't have much left on my corrosion gun. I'm going to use it anyway. There we 
are. I'm gonna need more weapons soon though. Another blueprint for a shock bat used once. A blueprint that contains a scheme for creation. A supercharged bat that shocks the enemy. Tesla would be proud. Very well. Worthwhile doing the fight for that, I think. So you found an old crate. It was locked. A bandit has detected you and is charging your way, shouting something rude. Ah, oh, I'm not allowed to jump the bandit, knock him out and loot the crate. Fight the bandit, loot the crate. I will quickly unlock the crate, take what you can and run. I imagine if I fight the bandit, probably going to get more stuff. Whereas if I take what I can and run, I'll get probably a limited amount of stuff, but I don't have to do a fight. Mm, I think we'll fight. I hope this is this is a worthwhile decision. Uh, shoot him with the gun. Um, uh, corrosion phaser. Oh no, he's going to get another turn. Oh no, he didn't. Cool. I'm really hurt now. Nano bandage. Oh, I need to use the nano bandage. Can I use it out of combat? Yes. So I've got sulfur, iridium, and two crude oil. Hopefully that was worthwhile. See, I should have used my ignition grenade, but I didn't seem to have it to use that. I'll, I'll see next fight whether it shows up again or whether I need to move it somewhere else. Can I move it? I've got painkillers, which give me 15 health points. Three health points for five turns. Hmm. If I lose a bit more health, I'll use a painkiller. Gotta do this all by myself. The desert was hot and full of sand. Sand in your shoes. Sand everywhere! Take care of your shoe and shake it to get rid of the sand or find a stone to sit down on. Uh, no, I'm not going to sit on a stone. There might be some bitey bugs or ants or something on the stone. Hey, the Shilab. Shilabots. <laughs> Eventually, you got rid of the sand and were ready to move on when suddenly you saw a familiar shape in the distance. It was that artifact that you found on the unknown spaceship. And say, Vidana, can you see that? Commander, I can see it too. It's not a mirage. We have to follow it immediately. It may hold answers. Vidana was excited. The quest was on. The artifact seemed to drift away into a valley. You almost lost sight of it. You strolled through the valley. It was quiet. The artifact was slowly drifting on. You could still see it. This looks like a really, really nice, safe place. The sand was covered with damaged weapons and used bullets. This looks like a scene of a gang fight or a battlefield. I'm gonna look around. There was a dark spot somewhere deep in the valley. You couldn't tell whether it was a house or a wreck. Cautiously move forward. It's an ambush by a shrimp. This one looked different, greenishly different. Its body was covered by some unusual scale. Okay, so it's got loads of armor. 10 armor. Um, and it's got two health so I think the best thing we can do is again use the corrosion grenade maybe well that worked well continue the journey it looks like chat are having a big old discussion about what um the collective name for people that follow my channel is and, and th there isn't one <laughs> there just really isn't one it just wanted to hug me no it didn't no it did not that was a battle scene so Verdana self-activated again I'm picking up a powerful time paradox anomaly right ahead she buzzed you can see a ruined ship in the end of the valley look around and cautiously approach the ship run for the ship or run for your life I'm going to be brave and I'm going to cautiously approach it. Not run for it, just going to be in the middle, okay? 
continue my journey. So this is us being cautious. The artifact was nowhere to be seen. Maybe it was inside the ship. The sand started to move. Um, hey, what are you? Who are you? A DNA test is required for identification purposes. The normal bot screamed. If you do not match, you will be annihilated. If you refuse, you will be annihilated. That's my best Dalek voice. The bot approached you with its cutters, apparently read, ready to perform the test. Or maybe it's more like a Cyberman then, if it's got cutters. Um, uh, it won't hurt, will it, your test? The robot slightly pinched your leg with its manipulator. DNA testing in progress, stay where you are, otherwise you will be annihilated. You have been identified. Welcome home, federal hero. The bot squeaked and buried itself in the sand again. Looks like the bot took you for its owner. Federal hero? Alright then, let's take a look at what this all is. Yay, we made friends with the robot. We made friends with the robot. So, we acquired five fighty fighty points. Five, five intelligence points and nine friendliness points. We got a bunch of stuff. Can unload it apparently. So is this like our base or something? Let's go have a look at this jukebox, shall we? My inventory, my jukebox. What's this in the middle? Oh, there's a crafting uh, bench. You can create items at the workbench from resources that you gathered in your journey or from those that you salvaged at your base. New equipment is unlocked at technologies. Some equipment needs blueprints to be created and blueprints are found in the world of Horizon. Okay, I've got some blueprints already. So key tech devices, key tech war crafting and key tech support. Hmm. Well we got a couple of guns, didn't we? Oh I see. Unlocks access for war crafting technologies. You need a handheld incinerator you can get oh right this allows you to create handheld incinerator and super jump boots very nice you can make smoke a shock bat and a lock pick out of devices and support would give you a translator and a nano bandage hmm. metallic structure a program for worker droids that allows the combination of primitive resources into more complex ores or Salvage carbon, special tech gear that's used for extracting primitive resources from scrap. Hmm. Well, we've got some scrap. How about we, we try sal Well, we've got to use iridium for that. Don't have enough resources for that. We've got to have loads of metals for it. Okay. Oh, I see. So, goodwill. Oh, so we can unlock all of these. Using our points that we... So... Our answers in uh, in our sort of relationships with people and stuff that actually allows us to build things. Ah, I like it. So we can have support level one because we've got enough for that. Oh no, we don't. We've only got nine. Oh, I see. And when we get to it, we don't use up the points. It's just having to get to a certain level of points, and then we can unlock new things. I like. I like a lot. I'll craft that. It's a salvage copper. So if we have two iridium and 75 carbon, then we can start salvaging copper, apparently. Okay, I like that. That's good. So this is a tech tree, basically. Journey, inventory, salvage, create items. So salvage. Got salvage carbon from scrap. I don't know how much scrap I have. Oh, is that is that all my scrap? Oh yeah, you can see my scrap in the middle there. Did did anything here require carbon? Yeah, it did, didn't it? So if I have seventy five carbon, I can now craft my copper salvaging. Um, and some more carbon would give me, and some more iridium would allow me to salvage iron. Oh, this is good. 
I like it. Create items. So technologies open up new opportunities to create equipment, weapons, grenades, defences and gadgets. Economical technologies open up new salvage routes for resource production. Oh, got it. Cool. I like this. It's a little crafting area. I was only expecting... Um, I was just expecting this to be like a story game. I wasn't expecting to be able to make things. So gadgets. I can make super jump boots. I can make lock picks. I can make universal translators. Well, I've, I've got some of those, but I don't have any super jump boots. So if I had iron and carbon, I could make those. Okay, and let's try consumables. Bandages uh, made out of oil and carbon. Well, it'd be useful to have more of those. Uh, smoke grenades. I can make a smoke grenade. Weapons. Uh, handheld incinerator. Or a shock bat. Mm. So I can make one of those. Can't make one of those. Let's make a shock bat then. Yay! The more weapons I have, the better it's going to be. So can I change the music on the jukebox or can I just turn it on and off? Just turn it on and off, seemingly. Oh, so what's over here? So that's my inventory. I've got a new shock bat, new smoke bomb, new uh, nano bandage. Got all these resources. I can just click on them, see what they're about. So stun and shock. Cool. Let's go back on our journey then. I think that's. Uh, I think we're ready now. So when we're ready to continue the journey, uh, to collect your journey bag, click on the items from your inventory to your journey bag and press forward. Okay, cool. So this is what I want to take with me, I guess. I want to take all of these with me. So I've only got a certain amount of uh, room and I've got to choose between them. Okay. So we can teleport to the base or we can continue journeying. So that's pretty cool. So we went over to this uh, sort of abandoned ship and that's now our base and we had a robot that thinks that we're its master and yeah, pretty good. I got a new <laughs> a new Avac. I got a new sponsor. Thank you, Avac. It took me ages to notice that. I was too busy like being all like happy about my base that I just got. Um, you wanted an icon next to your name. Yeah, it's, it's a really good icon, isn't it? It took me ages to draw that icon. You have no idea how long that took. About about six hours. I'm really bad at drawing. That's why it took six hours. Okay, so continue journey. What a wonderful day. The desert was hot and full of sand. Sand in your shoes. Again, really, you thought. <sighs> Maybe it wants us to sit down on a stone. So, okay, okay game, fine. Eventually, you got rid of the sand and were ready to move on. Nothing else happened. Basically nothing. Well, okay. An old robot has detected you. It is approaching you extremely slowly. Extremely slowly now do we want loot or do we not want loot i think we want loot oh guys what do you think do we want loot or do we not want loot attack everything so wait a few seconds i think for the chat delay unless you guys have all fallen asleep i wouldn't blame you he might have torpedoes. Oh, well, th well, that's enough of a reason. Oh, no, he's got, like, whirly gigs and pincers. No one told me he had whirly gigs and pincers and lasers. <gasps> Nightmare. Okay, he has um, some armor on him, so anything that can corrode would be useful. Ouch. 
So I need to get through his armor and then I can take him down. Let's just blast him with the blaster. Oh, that worked pretty well. Continue journey. What did I get? I got a blueprint. Sorry, a blueprint. A blueprint for a handheld incinerator. Used once, a blueprint contains a scheme for creation. A portable and simple gun constructed to torch targets. His ammo carriage is pretty small. Oh, I think I might already have that one. I'm not sure. Oh well. Let's continue our journey. Square root of pyram pyramidal cosine. Ugh. The entrance greeted you with a chill wind. Seemed to be quite nice after the heat of the desert. It was time to venture forward. Move down the passageway. That's basically a portable incendiary torpedo. Yeah, I suppose I suppose it is. You're obsessed with incendiary torpedoes too. Um, you descended into the cold hallway. It stretched fairly far. The SOS signal was somewhere ahead and it was moving away from you. Why are you calling Vadana, Vadana honey? Honey. Uh, I'm going to ask if she's there though. She was recharging or something. No, she just didn't want to talk to you because you called her honey. You passed by a strange statue with a torch in one hand and some semblance of a book in the other. The area was covered with junk. Among it, you found some loot. Take the loot or don't touch it. It's gonna be a trap. It's gonna be a trap, but I can't help myself. Oh, well, maybe it wasn't a trap? Carbon and oil, great. The hallway forks in two. Nothing to think about. Take the left branch. Well, the left path looks suspicious. I'd rather go straight ahead down the hallway. No, you never go straight ahead. You always have to look in all the side rooms. That's what Avak would do. Oh, I found some iridium. Once you passed through the arch, there was a click sound as if you'd set off a trap. Rocks started to fall from the ceiling. Oh, that's if I have the jump boots. I get... I need to make those so bad. Run for my life. Okay, I took some damage there. The entire hallway started to shake threateningly and because of the trouble you get yourself in never ends halfway, the ceiling collapsed. A small furry animal was rushing by squeaking. I'm going to grab the animal and protect it from the falling rocks because I am a nice guy. Several rocks fell painfully down on you but you managed to avoid major injuries. The animal was intact. After the final shake it broke free and disappeared between the rocks. Something metallic can be seen between the rocks. I'll clear this obstruction, or I have to be careful. I might move something and everything will collapse. Nah. Okay, while digging, you ran into components of a research drone. It was seriously damaged, but a portion of the charge remained. Once you switched on the drone, it squeaked unintelligibly. Charging shields, enhancing armor. Armor? I don't want to get hit by a random shocking attack. Shields. That way I won't be hurt by fire. Um, I already have some shields. Armour. The droid performs the task you required and shuts down. The hallway becomes completely silent. So I've got some iridium and carbon. Did I get any shields from that? No, I didn't. Oh well. Continue journey. Or I could teleport back to base and see if I can make the boots yet. Let's see. Let's see if we can make the boots. Because I didn't really look into them because I didn't sort of realise uh, what they would what they would entail. So let's just double check. Um, so gadgets, super jump boots. So we're gonna need ten iron. And some carbon. That's not going to be that bad to make because if we go up here, we can get the uh, uh, iron salvaging pretty soon. We just need, we've got the iridium for it now, we need 50 carbon. So if I just go to the salvaging thing and get 50 carbon, then that should be enough to go back over here. 
and get the iron salvaging thing. We've got to salvage keramite for 4 iridium, 35 iron and 55 copper. Okay, cool. Don't need that quite yet though. How much iron was it? I can't remember. 10 iron, 25 carbon. Okay, let's go and salvage that out then. So I need 10 iron, 25 carbon. Right, there we go. Jump boots are go. Well, I could have jumped out of the way in that last fight. Well, kind of a fight with the rocks. Done. Right. What's everyone saying in chat? Fire seems the most pointless space weapon to carry, and yet it was my character's first option on meeting another spaceship. Fires exposed to space don't tend to be fires for long. Yeah, maybe it explodes on contact or something. Not sure. We'll take those boots with us anyway. Forward! Oh, hang on, was there a chart? So sorry about this. I'm going to go back to the base a second because I, I, I'm sure I saw something that said charge module. Uh, it's a capsule opener. Okay, we don't have any of those. I think I might have been imagining it. Yeah, I must have been imagining it. I have carbon, I can make a handheld incinerator. Why why not actually? Let's make some of those. May as well make everything I have, right? So now I've got that. Only has two charges though. Okay, off we go. As you head out, there's a toggle that says charge mode. Ah, well, we'll we'll have a look at that next time we go in. Because I've been back too many times already. What a wonderful place, full of ghosts and a pack of natives surrounds you. One points a finger at you and says, "Just that guy that steal my donation for that good." For the god UV power. I can use a translation uh, module to say I didn't take anything. Or I can say so what and start a fight. I'm going to try and be diplomatic. I like to be diplomatic if I can. The small one started to quarrel. What the hell going on? Damn it. Blah blah blah. The natives were arguing. While they were engaged in their verbal confrontation. You took from them what could come in handy. Uh, I'll only take those things and run off. Oh, no, 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 that's too risky. I'd better just... Ah, oh, let's take it. Take stuff. I'm... I, I got away with it. Cool. Very cool. Badana was shutting down all the time. And you decided to make a quick fix for her systems. What inspired you? Okay, so I was inspired by the panoramic view of the cave that stretched in front of you. You're motivated by your suffering and the hardships you had to overcome. You felt lonely and decided to change that as soon as possible. I'm quite a friendly guy, so I think I was lonely. Once you reached the end of the hallway, you felt you could use a companion and ally. An idea struck you. Yeah, exactly. I need to redirect the Zeta stream to... You definitely understood how to reanimate your AI. Hi there, Vadana. I've missed you. Avak says, I prefer to be diplomatic when I can. Except when I can steal everything. Yeah. Diplomacy is the gateway to thievery. For now, all you heard in response was some background noise and static, but we were sure that the idea was borderline genius. Okay. Didn't work very well. That looks like a giant slide! Oh, looks so cool. You should have slid down there and not walked. You're walking through an open cave. Ancient monoliths and structures gouge deeply in the rocks. Um... 
examine the walls and hallways or load the last day's events to the AI's memory. I'm gonna examine the walls and hallways. Ooh, got some stuff. You take a closer look and found some minerals and metals that would come in handy if you had a chance to create additional equipment. Right, now I'm gonna load the, the day's events to the AI's memory. It, it seems a bit too random. Uh, but Dana will be able to analyze them and suggest something when she comes back to life. Something sarcastic for sure. She's a she's an AI after my own heart. What's that up ahead? An old digging machine was sprawling up ahead. For a moment, you thought you saw someone flash inside the cab and hide quickly. You say, "Hey, anyone there?" Because I'm a friendly kind of guy. Is that a bony lizard's tail ticking, sticking out from beneath your coat? No. What do you mean? The hallway stretched onwards and onwards. You couldn't see its end, but you could see your map tracker. The, dis the distress signal really close. You had no time to wait. So we can make haste or no rush to safety first. No rush, safety first. We'll make haste. You had no time to wait, it says. So I'm going to make haste. I've got some resolve there, okay. As you were closing on the signal location, you started to hear shouting. Someone was still there. I'm going to bravely walk forward. And you bumped into a group of pygmies that seemed to be itching for a brawl. Unlucky you. Pygmies. Okay, well, this is a, a good time, I think, to be using my new handheld incinerator. Um, and I shot bat. Bye bye. Did I get any stuff off them? Sulfur, yay, and 20 scrap. Stupid pygmies. Okay, you saw a large man shouting, get this scum in the van quick, boys. We need to get all the info out of him fast. Come on, faster. Bandits were trying to pull another man into their hover van. Seemed like you didn't want that to happen. As they fought, you saw something fall out of their captain's bag. Eventually, they managed to push the stranger into the van. A few moments later, they were gone. Um, I'm going to pick up the object that fell out of the captain's, ba captive's bag. Burn and ate the natives. Perfect. Well, they attacked me, to be fair. They attack me. I, I, I'm diplomatic when they want to speak to me, but if they're going to fight me, then gloves are off. Sid's data pad. If you find it, return to Sid. It's scribbled on the side. Seems like its owner would really want it back. It has detailed info on the geography of Horizon. If only you could turn back time and choose again. Hmm. The device was old, dusty, with an unknown interface, but it was a map. The map had detailed coordinates of the horizon. You hear a loud roar in the distance. A huge horde of pygmies was approaching you. You had to move. Go on then. You barely made it out alive. Pygmies were left, right and centre. All over the place. Some were chasing you. Ran around the sand dune wasting their time. I think I'll do that. You managed to exhaust them and hide behind a dune. Suddenly a huge explosion shook the ground. The cave behind you was sealed shut. If anything was to come out of it now, it would have to find another way. Mm, I'm going to quietly slip away. I don't know how many pygmies there are. You went past a fragment of your wrecked pod. That was a compression battery that was used in the control panel. The charge was warm, which means the decomposition elements inside were unstable. I still think I could put it to good use. So we've got crude oil and sulphur. In any case, there was no time to think about all the pros and cons. What was important was finding shelter and making a plan of how to save yourself. Move on. Okay, so we've got some things we can look at here. So a vertex tubic, a, re a regular plant in zones contaminated with radiation. Its leaves contain a usable... Sorry, a usable version of carbon. Oh, carbon. Yay, I like carbon. Useful. The hideout contains some items. A hack virus or a lockpick. I think uh, I have a lockpick, but I don't have a hack virus. 
Okay, I'm gonna continue for a little bit. Actually, no, I'm gonna go back to the base. I'm gonna see about charging things up. So I'll unload all my stuff. So if I go here, um, charge mode. Select select a weapon to charge. So for example, my corrosion phaser, I think needed some charge. Oh, I see, we use carbon to charge our weapons back up. Nice. Take charge mode back off. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else we can make though. Um, so I can salvage a bit more carbon. Lots of scrap. And uh, let's have a look at what other guns we can make. We've made all the guns we can make so far. Made smoke grenades, bandages, translators, lockpicks and boots. So to really to make anything else, I think we're going to need extra um, crafting levels. But I think I need 15. Yeah, I'm being too balanced. Which is going to give me lots of options, but it's going to also mean that I don't progress very quickly down any one route. Okay, so it looks to me like this... Once I have all of this unlocked, this will be a bit easier. So I can't really do anything with that. So yeah, let's go back on our journey then, shall we? At least we've got a few more charges on the old gun. Look at a chat there. Uh, Isham Goma says, subjugate the locals and take their loot. Sounds British. Wilfred says, technically, as soon as we subjugate, it's not theirs anymore. So we're not taking it from them. Plus... We leave them a nice flag. You've got to make sure you leave a good flag. It's not yours if there's no flag. A really aggressive cactus that spreads its roots deep underground to reach for moist moisture, probably. But usually it finds something else. Like oil! Yay! You don't mean that. As she stopped to take a break, a pygmy appeared from behind the nearest hill. He waved his hands and yelled, Hey! Hey you! Yes you! Help me get my magnum opus. You didn't hear me? It's magnum opus. Yes, opus. Yes. It looked like the heat made him a little crazy. He wouldn't leave you alone. I'll help you. You managed to push the vehicle down the hill, and the pygmy quickly took you to the rust bucket with a skeleton behind a wheel. It was surely beyond repair, but putting the wheels back on should be no problem. Thank you on behalf of Max. Take one of these great artifacts. So we can have grenades, scrap, or medicine. Hmm, grenades. Ah, oh, more ignition grenades. I've got loads of them now. Yay! What's in there? Sporinom, a phlegmatic plant that survives practically anything. Glows with chemical colours in the dark. Probably contains sulphur. Yeah. Because sulfur glows in the dark. Everyone knows that. Well, that was interesting, but still, questions needed to be answered. And seems that the man taken prisoner could have something to tell. And you could be a nice guy and help him. On the other hand, you had his data pad with coordinates that led to his, this unknown artifact. Yes, you could feel that this was the time Lady Luck smiled at you. You could go for the artifact. Seemed that it was something to be contested. And something that might prove valuable. Hmm. Guys, this is a major decision. What do you think? I'll wait for it to catch up. So we can either save the guy or we can steal the stuff save the guy steal the stuff no torpedo option i'm out oh okay help sid help sid 
Oh, so you guys, you guys are going to be helpful this time. Okay, let's help, Sid. Except Stephen Wolf, who thinks we should steal everything. I think that's two to one, though. The data pad had a security feature that made it possible to track its owner. You had Sid's coordinates. You were on the road again. Okay. Yeah, we still got, I think, more saves than we have for taking the... Uh, whatever it's called, the artifact. Uh, the data... Uh, la, la, la. You had Sid's coordinates. You were on the road again. I think I'd already read that bit. Part two, chasing shadows. I don't know how many parts there are. Buzz, 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 you heard nearby. You saw a merchant bot sticking out in the sand upside down. Kick it as hard as you can or help it get out. I think I'll help it get out. It's a merchant. I want it to like me so it'll trade. The bot blinks his eyes and says, Welcome to the space shop. Choose your daily bonus. Daily bonus, yes. Crude oil. Mark 1 armour. I've got those and I never use them. Mm, crude oil. Take all. Yay. Got resources of carbon as well. Continue my journey. An ancient guardian bot has locked his long range missiles onto you. You have to break it down so he doesn't fire. Hmm. Another one of these guys. And again, lots and lots and lots of armour, but not so much health. So, good job, I uh, charged up my corrosion phaser. That'd be overkill. Oh, I can punch him, he's only got two hit points left. No point. If you if you've only got two hit points, there's no point using your stuff. You may as well just punch him in the face. There we are. Continue journey. Ah, some more iridium. That's good. Okay, so vertex cubic, which contains carbon. Thank you very much. Continue the journey. So, what's this on the floor? Mountains blocked your path. Your destination was somewhere over the rocky ridge. A small raider outpost was just ahead. Surely you could get through there, but it would definitely prove to be dangerous. So we can make our way to the raider outpost, out, uh, outpost or scan for a path through the mountains. Hmm. I'll scan for a path through the mountains first and then see what it says. No luck. There was no obvious way through, but you found some resources. Oh, that's useful. Raider outpost it is then. So the outpost, in fact, was a base of operations for the bandits, if you could call what they did operations. Uh, carefully walk ahead or shout, hey bandits, want a piece of me? No, I'll carefully walk ahead. You crawled ahead and accidentally tripped over a wire. Ouch. Why does that always happen to me? Stupid wires. A bandit that's been stalking you for some time already has ambushed you. You have to defend yourself. Bandits aren't too bad. So we don't have. I think that's armour, and I think that's like. You really only have two health? I'm going to punch him then. Bonus damage from fire. Okay. I think I've got like a fire gun. Incinerate him. He's doing lots of damage to me, unfortunately. I bandaged myself. I uh, probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, just punch him because he's only got one health point left. You're dead. You're so dead. Continue my journey. I feel like I wasted a bandage a bit there. We've got loads of painkillers though. As you were passing the area, you saw a strange trap. A crude construction as if built by children. 
While you were investigating it, a group of pygmies surrounded you. It seems that the trap has worked in a very strange way. Hmm. Great. Pygmies. Pygmy attack. Um, they don't seem to have any armor or anything like that, so I think, again, it's going to probably be... Do you know what? I'm going to use an ignition grenade. Ah, that worked pretty well. I like grenades in this. They're quite useful. I know. What did I ever do to wires? They seem to have it in for me, basically, don't they? Okay, I think I need painkillers. Take all. Continue journey. Suddenly you heard a clicking sound. It seems that you've sprung a trap. You were trapped in a cage that slid up from the ground really quickly. I can get out with my lockpick. You fiddled with the lock and found a way to rearm the trap mechanism. The cage slid back under the ground. You salvaged the mechanism and made haste, so you would not be caught by those who set the cage. Nice one. I could do with making more lockpicks, though. You almost made it out. The ruined city was just ahead. Your coordinates seemed to be correct. As you were setting your foot on the hot desert sand, a gush of wind nearly blew you over. The city was in your sight. That seemed to be the final destination of those bandits. Ooh, pretty rock things. They look like they're about to call an alien. You see a small animal escaping from a shrimp. Commander, are we just going to stand there? Let's get a good position and watch for scientific purposes. Badana was a bit bloodthirsty. Uh, oh, it's, it's our squirrel that we saved from the rocks. No way, let's save the animal. Attack! Okay, so this guy literally only has health. So, just... Uh, throw a grenade at him. A stranger appeared. You saved him. I'm so grateful. There, take this in return. Okay, so we've got iridium and oil. Nice. So that's someone's pet, I think. Uh, some iron in there. Continue journey. Time to meet some new friends. The ridge was left behind. Now only occasional rocks reminded you that the desert had something besides sand. You were greatly surprised to encounter a small graveyard on your way. Examine the graveyard from a side. Walk into the graveyard. Perform various rites and recall some charm words. I'll examine it. The small area looked as though it had been torn asunder from another world. It seemed inappropriate and ridiculous in the desert. A few graves and old gravestones. This place was once well kept, but now the three trees were withered, and the scanty grass looked grey and diseased. A dreadful environment. Okay, I'm going to try various rites and charm words and see if anything works. You had to turn off Fadana, who began to lecture you on your behaviour. You wasted a half hour on the preparations, but now you felt a bit more confident. Shall we walk in? Let's walk in. A patch of land in the middle of the desert, unusual and scary. Now we saw five graves with gravestones. Maybe they would help you understand what kind of place this was. Um, there's an unearthed grave, an old gravestone, one in your native language, newest. I'm going to do the one in the native language first. I've only got one translator left. I should have cut the blue wire. I should take note of that. Very inter interesting sepulchres. You can hardly say anything more. Examine the gravestones. Examine the biggest gravestone. The developers apologise for being unable to place a worthy monster here. This is because of the crisis in the computer monster market. Let's see what's available. Ah, oh, pygmies again. I'm gonna run out of... Do they seriously just have one health? That wasn't very hard. Okay, so we've tried the largest one. The unearthed grave. Let's have a look at that. A single girl would like to meet. Brilliant, looks like she's found a mate. 
Okay. Let's do the oldest gravestone then. We will always remember what's his name. I had a friend. Okay, and the newest. And he said, throw me that grenade. Similarly, I once asked someone to throw me a knife. Well, I've examined everything. Time to move on. Oh, I got some carbon and sulfur for that, uh, for my troubles there. You see an alienist stranger standing on a rock in the distance. He's shouting in a broken dialect. You, no come closer. It's trap. Ground moves. Eat you alive. Something strange is going on. Um. Oh, if I had one of those, I could pull objects in to make a path from them so you don't have to touch the ground. I'll talk to the alien and find out what's wrong. I at least have a translator. Sir, I am surrounded by monstrous undead sand shrimps. They will pop out of the ground if you attempt to walk over. I'll try to walk over. As you come closer, the earth started to tremble, as if you woke it up, and dead sand shrimps start popping out of the ground. My told you, stupid human! You heard the alien voices. Yeah, but I want to come and help you. Hmm. Uh, shop. She's the shop rat. No, I didn't shock it enough. Darn it. Blaster. He dead. You fought the zombie sand shrimps and eventually got to the stone the stranger was on. Now you had to escape, and you could take the stranger with you. Oh, totes using my boots. Yeah. You helped the stranger escape. He was really grateful and gave you some of his stuff. Okay. So a cactus that found me some oil. What a wonderful day. Except that I'm in the desert. In the distance, ruined spires towered the sky. Crowds of gangsters could be seen with the naked eye. I would not recommend you go there. If you have any desire to survive, Vadana intervened. On your way, you ran into a bulletin board. It had pictures with some numbers at the bottom of it. Apparently, those were bounties promised for capturing someone. In the centre, you saw a rather detailed portrait with a message underneath. This is Slug's order. Do not leap. Take to the big boss's cave. Vadana archived that message. Jeez, I've become a star. <laughs> okay, now we can go back to the base at this point. We've got lots of uh, goodwill points, so we can go and upgrade our uh, tech tree. 265 scrap and a bunch of stuff. Cool. Right, so if we unlock this one. We can make a tooth fairy, a corrosion grenade, a gravy grabber, a painkiller. Oh, that's what I needed that last time. Gravy grabber. So I need 25 to get to level 2. 15 of those. So we need a few more of the resolve, but we only need one more point in devices. That's not too bad. Let's see what we can make over here now. Let's see if we can make a gravy grabber. Gravy grabber. Can't say it. So... Could do with another universal translator actually, so I need copper for that. Consumables. So I need 15 iron, 15 copper, carbon, and keramite. Oh, keramite, wow. Okay, let's see what we can make. Just get a few of everything. And what I need to then go and see if I can do is get the Keramite salvaging. So 35 iron, 55 copper. Okay. I think that's enough. Yep. 
to get some keramite now. I want five of it. And I just need to check how much that grab is going to take. So I need 15 copper, 15 iron. Easy enough. Uh, iron up to 15. Oh, copper up to 15. Perfect. I'll use that caramite later. I'm sure I will have a need for it. I've got a gravity grabber. And do I need some more lockpicks? Yeah, let's get some more lockpicks. Um, and another universal translator. We need more copper for that. Good to have all these gadgets because if I don't have them, I'm going to need them. Okay, uh, got armor modules, nano bandages, painkillers, corrosion grenades. Could maybe have more of those actually. Need more copper for that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go as I am. I think. Right, can we charge anything? My incinerator doesn't have any charge at all. Oh well, one charge is better than nothing. Ha ha ha, you people with Dungeons 3. Yes, it's out today. So you can go and buy it if you want. There's chat all talking about Dungeons 3 because... Apparently they don't have the time or the money to buy it, but because I'm playing it, they have to go and play it. Because I'm forcing them. The ruined city towered in front of you. It seemed empty, but you could feel that it was full of bandits and maybe even some sand shrimps. Most probably them, yeah. Yeah, because it's basically... I think they only had, like... Uh, Enough budget to draw about three different monsters for the fights. As you ventured towards the destroyed alleyway, you saw figures jumping out of the darkness, but none came closer. You can ignore them and follow ahead or try to interact. I'm going to try to interact because I'm a friendly kind of guy. You see a wounded pygmy lying on the ground. It's pretty hurt by a blaster shot. It seemed to be the bandit's idea of having fun. Oh, do I not have any bandages? No! I thought I had enough painkillers. Darn it. Um, as you move through the wreck, you suddenly hear a strange noise and you stop. Then you saw your hand covered by laser sights. You quickly leapt to safety as the ground behind you is barraged with brass rounds. One bandit was brave enough to jump straight at you. Do I? Oh, those... Those boots are consumable. Well, we'll have a fight then, shall we? So, they have a shield. So, shields protect well from fire and corrosion, but receive bonus damage from shock. So, I think my shock bat is needed. Shock bat! He's going to blast me again. And then I'm going to use the handheld incinerator because he's now unprotected. Nice one! Continue journey. You had some breathing room after the takedown, but more bandits were closing on your location. It was getting really hot in here. Did I not take my gravity grab with me? Ugh. Okay, we'll fight again. Oh, hello Tilly. What are you doing in my room? I should probably jump up on my desk in a minute, so we'll shock bat him again. And, uh, ignition grenade. I needed to make sure I took him down there. I'm going to take some painkillers now I come out of uh, combat as well. Suddenly, a piece of metal plate that you were standing on started to shake, probably from all the blaster fire, and you found yourself falling to an underground level. Let's just take some painkillers before that happens. You soon heard some strange noises, from the sound of which you managed to figure out that it was a person with some intellectual handicap trying to intimidate his prisoner. Ooh. 
It seemed that the interrogator decided to make a break and popped out for some time. You slowly made your way into the room. You saw the man from before sitting tied to a chair. My God, would he never shut up, he said. I thought I'd die from his voice alone. Oi there, maybe you could give me a hand and untie me so we could get the hell out of here. Um, hold on. As you were closing on the captive, a man, sorry, on the captive man, a voice interrupted you. I'd not do that if I were you. Do you have any idea who this man is? Tell me about him and yourself. This is Sly Sidemonius, the most wanted criminal this side of the nebula. You should check your friend or foe status with this guy. Why would you even think that you need to help him? Um, I want to find an artifact. He seems to know something about that. Or I want to get away from this planet and I need help. I'll talk about the artifact. Do you know that this planet is actually not a planet? It's a space station. A hella big one with guns and stuff. And there's a key out there that can give anyone access to its systems. Imagine all the things you could do with that. What, say you? Let's team up. You seem like a witty mate. We could be partners. So, do we betray Sid? Or do we uh, help Sid escape? What do you guys think? Tilly went away. Just looking around for her, she was nowhere to be seen. Oh, she's in Avak's room. She's like, oh, she loves not moving to get me any food. Avak, give me food. Never help bandits. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna carry on trying to help Sid then. How about no? You replied and cut Sid's ropes. Sid jumped up extremely fast and shouted, "Give me that device that I dropped! I saw you pick it up." You hurled Sid the data pad. He mashed some key combos into it, grabbed your hand, and in a whoosh, you were out. It was a portable teleporter, and now you were in the middle of the jungle. Okay. So where are we, and who are you? And yeah. Is that the way people hook up these days? I'm getting really old then, he laughed. Then you both laughed. I saw your distress signal and decided to check it out, but I got myself in the middle of something interesting here, it seems, she said. Technically, we all just want to get away from this planet. Yeah, and that big guy too. He's Slug, by the way. We used to be partners at some point. Slug wants to get hold of an ancient cryptic artifact that can turn this planet into a Death Star and then fly off. That probably includes quite a lot of pirating. Imagine how dangerous he would be if he got hold of that. And you don't plan to do that? I'll be honest with you, I'm a bandit too, but I act in much more civilised ways. And also, I'm not into killing. Definitely not my type of thing. There are tons of more ways to have fun than that for sure. My plan is pretty simple. There's a generation database on this planet with lots of funky, cool tech inside of it, and I know where it is. Now we just have to reach it. This thing surely has an answer on how to get out. Sid sure likes to talk a lot. Let's move then. Part three, on the run. <laughs> I can see Avak outside playing fishing rod with Tilly. Okay, a green oasis was stretching in front of you. You still had to answer plenty of questions. Why was that base pursuing you? What was the, what, sorry, what was the disc key? Why was everything trying to kill you? But first of all, you had to reanimate your AI. Madonna, hello, you're alive in there. C -c 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 Commander, finally you've collected enough wit to reboot the relational... Your AI was silent for a few seconds. Well, something is suppressing my neuron field. I will not be able to watch all your actions all the time. But sometimes I'll be able to come to your aid if needed. Hmm, great, well that's something. So we have intermittent Vodana now. Commander, it seems something is into. Vadana just blanked out. It did not look like a regular power issue. Something was jamming her signal. I'm going to check the area for anomalies because she's clearly not going to come back just because I say her name. You turned around and saw a strange man in the distance. He seemed to be trying to hide, but it was not really effective. He was holding a device and vigorously pressing some buttons on it. I will greet him. Nothing changed. The man was still there, mashing the buttons on his device. Well, apparently I only have... 
the option of punching him, so I guess that's what I shall do. He saw you walking towards him and pressed some more buttons on his device. You were trapped in a strange simulation. Well, I can hack my way out. Why not? Let's hack out. You broke the simulation and escaped the mirage. The strange man was just in front of you. Take the device and break it. Remove its batteries. No, I'm going to remove its batteries. I don't want to break it just in case it's something really important. Oh, I got some stuff for that. Cool. Wow, that little son of a... Oh my god, I have to really look over my language protocols. I've been hacked, burst out of a Dana. I'll go on a reboot. Should be fine after that. Thank you. Okay, so what's in here then? Rare elements can be harvested. Ooh, Keramite. Very nice. Looks like a place with some pygmies, but it would be pretty loud then, and it's not now. Copper or iron? Mm, iron, please. Continue journey. What insights await? Sid went on further about how great it would be to find the data bank and about all the things they could do with it. You were getting a bit suspicious. Um, let's move on and secretly ask Madonna. Oh, what did you expect from a renowned pirate, she mentioned. I would keep a lookout if I were you. I'm getting the feeling that you don't actually need him at all to escape the planet. Maybe she was right. What was stopping you from switching off the gravitational anomaly on your own? What do we have here? A strange device was lying on the ground just before you. It was emitting weird electric currents. Oh, I don't have any hacking stuff left. I need to go back to the base and make more stuff, don't I? More boots, more hacking things. Because that was annoying. I should have had the stuff for that. Some masked beefcake emerged right before you. Ah, sluggers offered a bounty for your head, he yelled. Okay, so this guy needs a shock bat. If I have any charge left, that's my last shock bat charge. What? It did nothing. How did that do nothing? Grr. Okay, normal, normal phaser blast then. Oh, okay. That was easy. Let's go back to the base because we were totally, totally running out of stuff and we could have had some interesting uh, points there but we couldn't play with that device so that was really annoying. So we'll unload all our stuff. I need more lockpicks. I need more um, translators, more, but more jumping boots, carbon, iron. Let's make some more carbon, more iron, more copper generally. generally just get a few of each of these done there okay let's let's see what we can make with that um so a lock pick two lock picks boots grab a thing a couple of universal translators if possible which it wasn't um consume balls a bandage got loads of those got painkillers Erosion grenade. We don't have enough copper. Or enough carbon for the smoke grenades. Okay, let's get some more copper and carbon then. So let's have a smoke grenade. And a corrosion grenade. I want another shock bat. Oh. Okay, so I don't have enough blueprints for it. Okay, oh, that's a nightmare. So note to self, don't use the last charge on something. Copper and carbon. I can make a tooth fairy. Copper and carbon. 50 of each. That's iron, not carbon. Let's make a tooth fairy. Okay, let's go over here and see if we can do... 
Oh, we can get devices level one now. So we can make a shield module mark one, a hack virus, and an EM grenade. Ooh, more hack viruses, please. Hack viruses. So I need 20 copper. Okay. I'll be out of scrap pretty soon. But I want these things available if I need them. I might not need them for a while, but I want them there if I do. Okay, I think I'm pretty stacked up with stuff now, which is good. So, what am I going to take? Charge mode. A handheld incinerator. I need copper to charge it. Nightmare. Corrosion phaser needs carbon. That just needs carbon. Oh, I need more carbon and more copper. Charge everything up. That'll do. I know. Blueprints are consumable. Uh, that, I was not expecting that. So... Let's charge up the blaster. It's got a few charges on it now. That has, that needs some more. Oh, I can. Oh, cool. I can charge back up the shock bat, the bat, the shock bat. So it's not so bad that the, uh, they're not consumable. Sorry, that the blueprints are consumable. Once I've made something, I can just keep charging it back up. I want to take my tooth fairy with me. Apparently that's not charged. Okay. Take it out of charge mode. You take that with me, that with me, that with me, that with me. As much as I can. That's my inventory pretty much full though. I'm going to have to start choosing between things in the future now. Oh, I need a lockpick. But I have one. I have two, in fact. So that's some extra iridium. Chain ivy, which has some keramite in it. Very nice. Let's continue our journey. I do mean that. Let's continue the journey. What do we have here? You saw a crate that was sinking in the sands. The area was dangerous. You can try and lockpick it really fast or grab it. I'm going to try and lock pick it really fast. You nearly got sucked by the sands, but you managed to get some loot. Two sulfur. Cool. The construction towering before you was not of these origins. It looked quite alien in this jungle scenery, with all its pygmies and shrimps. You entered the shade of the building's wall. It was quite cool in here. Um... I'll just scan for electronics then. The data bank ought to pop up. I'm not going to trust him. I don't care if I'm a friendly guy. I don't trust him. Hell, it's dark in here. Yeah, the scan looks like a great idea. Let's boot it up. And after a few minutes of techno babble and a few random walls that you hit with your head, the two of you managed to stroll into a room. Something was emitting light from the far corner of the room. Actually, it was two lights, like two eyes. You slowly approach the light. Great of you to come and save me. This wire has jammed some of my systems. You heard a slightly robotic voice. Sorry, I didn't do that in a slightly robotic voice. Um, and you are? Codename Blake. I perform tasks of the data bank that is associated with the colonisation of the system. So far, humans did not succeed in their duties and I am attempting to enhance the process. Primary due to the fact that this is not a planet. Yeah, we already know that this is not a planet, stepped in Sid. What info do you have on the gravitational anomaly here? Why the hell can't anyone fly away from here? Blake paused for a bit as if thinking. The anomaly is of techni technological origins. It runs on large power source. Two ways to neutralise the gravitational anomaly. Anomaly. Externally shut down the power source or receive authorised access to the control panel of the planet. Consequences of such actions? Unknown. Hmm. 
Alan, no, what are you talking about? A steady course of action would be to find other humans. That way you would be more safe and could increase your knowledge. Let me enhance your scan device with my data, Blake said. He stretched out his hand, waiting for you to give him your navigation device. Mm, okay. A few seconds after, he gave it back. It had full data on the local surroundings. There was a large patch of unknown territory that seemed to not have any data on it. When you examined it closely, the info said no signal received. That was quite strange. Also, the location of the Horizon Hall of Control showed up. You can see it clearly now. So, Sid, what do you think? Well, there's only one thing to do. Let's get you out of here, you rusty old piece of... Sid started mumbling while attempting to drag Blake away from the wires. Hey, give me a hand here. We need to give this guy a quick fix and get moving. He asked for help. Let me think about this. It seemed that the choice was quite clear. Shut down the gravitational anomaly and fly off. Sid was up to it too. But something seemed so wrong about this. Consequences unknown. To hear something like that from an android that had all humanity's knowledge... You were not so sure that you could convince Sid to take an alternative route. Why would you need Blake or Sid when you had Vadana? Sure, she could help you tinker with the uh, Horizons controls. That should be surely, I think. So, we should help Sid with his revolution and destroy, destroy the gravitational jam. Or oh, screw Sid, he's just interested in his revolution. Who knew, knows what would happen if you blow up the Horizon core reactor? And you need to get real stuff done. Find a way to get out of here. Hmm. I don't trust Sid. So we're gonna we're gonna go it alone. We're gonna be a yeah, real stuff. I think you guys are agreeing with me. Let's go for it. It was quite dark over here, so you made the decision. Working with Sid seemed dangerous and uncertain. Something had to change. You had to go on your own again. You slipped inside the shadows, and we're on your way. You had to reach the control room first, and you desperately hoped you'd had the knowledge to do everything on your own. A few hours later, with the help of Vadana, you were at the entrance to the Horizon Cave. Coordinates led you and Vadana to a mysterious-looking cave that consisted of platforms joined together, as if blocks in a child's castle. You wondered if you would encounter Slug, Sid or Blake. They all had their plans for the Horizon, and you had yours. I've triangulated the exact location of Horizon's Hall of Control, with minimal chance of error based on the data from Sid's data pad, she said. Tell me, Commander, what do you plan doing with it? Do you even know how to operate it? I don't know, but I learn fast. Or you can help me, can't you, honey? Oh, I can't call her honey. That just drives me nuts. Part 4, Rankin Zero. You saw a very long metal bridge in front of you, an immobilised robot was blocking the way. It looked heavily armoured and its power shields were vibrating in the air. One of its pupils was emitting red light, but it was showing no signs of aggression. For now. So, um... Hack its shields, remove its armour, do it all. I don't know what I'm waiting for, I'll show this robot. Which has a death skull on it. Doesn't look good. I think we should try everything. Okay, so you see a huge robot before you. You need to disarm it before it kicks your butt. Take off the external shields. Then remove the armour. You have to jump onto its head and damage the targeting sensor. Then you have to fry the new shield generating module. As soon as you've got all of that done, to make yourself look cool, you turn back and run. Don't look at explosions. <laughs> Lonely Island reference. Solved. Obviously, don't look at the explosions. Okay, the Battle Colossus was nearly disassembled into component parts. It tried to attack you, but after several futile attempts, it sank to the ground. Um. 
Oh, so I could use my boots up to get points in things. I think that'd be good. I like robots. Oh, interesting. People in chat are saying that they trusted Sid because Sid had a beard. I see. I think uh, I think the other guy did, didn't he, as well? A wild sand shrimp appeared. It looks hungry. No way to run. No way to hide. I hate you, sand shrimp. Oh my goodness, you have a shield and armor. That's not fair. Hmm. Well, I'll corrode you first. Oh right, so I have to. It looks like it's in in the order. All oh, right, I should have shocked it first. Okay, I just want to shoot it with the normal blazer, uh, blaster. I'm taking corrosion damage at this point as well. I'm gonna use my shield. Okay, that was worthwhile. Um, so I think now I'm gonna use my. Incinerator. Bye bye, sand shrimp. Continue the journey. Cool. Okay, so. Do I have any armor at all? Grenades, shock bats. Uh, yes, I do. I have an armor module. Take that as well, then, couldn't I? That might be useful. I've got several of them, actually. I could take a bandage for eight health points. No, I'll just continue, I think, for now. Kate Leonard thinks I made the right choice not to trust Sid, never trust someone that handsome. Also, he had, like, although he had the beard, it was like a twisty, pointy beard like villains have. So, you know, he's clearly a villain based on the beard. Watch out, Commander. I know these AA statues. They're so-called guardians. Vadana got really hostile for a sudden. Who walks on four legs in the morning on three legs in the afternoon? Damn it, wait. I'll check the data storage to see how to say it right. That was the stone shrimp talking, using your voice. Uh, Vadana, help me. You're reading me like low-level code, exclaimed Vadana. I would destroy it if I were you and had guns. Uh, I trust you, Vadana. You'd better be right, though. And that was not the brightest idea. The statue reflected your shots back. Ouch. It was probably time to move on. Oh, I took some damage. Thanks, Vadana. You suck. What a wonderful day. You saw a group of bandits quarrelling with each other. The strongest one of them beat the others up and took all their loot. You could ambush him and take the loot for yourself. So... I'm gonna beat him up. He took away all my shields. Okay, so I need my shock, but no, Tooth Fairy. Two stun turns, yeah, why not? Stunned him for two turns. Um, then I could use my shock bat. Then I can use my incinerator. Then I'll just use my normal shotgun. Um, yay, that worked. Took a couple of turns. And I got some crude oil, nice. Okay, so I think I need to take another uh, shield module. And I need painkillers, I think. There we are, back to the normal. And I think we need to go back to the base now. And make a few things. Maybe some more painkillers. I think we can upgrade a couple of levels of... Uh, yes, we're at 25 on both of those now. And I think we're above 10 on that. So I think we can take levels in everything. So Warcraft... Oh, we need 15. Okay. And then improved blaster and ignition grenades. Ignition grenades are really useful. Um, so I can get level 2 in support. Booster pills and an improved corrosion phaser. Very nice. 
can get a zap pistol. Okay. I could probably make that at this point, I think. So I need 80 of those, don't I? Oh, I've completely forgotten how much I needed of everything. 80 iron, 5 iridium. Oh, I don't have enough iridium to start with. I have 2. 40 keramite. Okay, that'll have to wait, I think. So there's a few things I can make now with my new support levels. I now have a shock... Uh, booster pills. I've got me more copper for that. I need to make sure I have some of all the metals, actually. I need more copper than that. going until I've run out of scrap. Okay. So I want uh, do I need another hack virus if I used all this stuff up? I have no idea. So we'll make something that's new like booster pills. Make one of those. So you get armour and shield and health. Wow. They're pretty potent. Make one of those. One of those. Maybe two, actually, of each of those. Make some more painkillers because I've been going through those like crazy. Oh, I need nano bandages to make the painkillers with. So I'll make maybe three of those and another painkiller. Smoke yeah, an EM grenade. Looks useful. And a zap pistol. I need... A blueprint for a... Oh, I've got to find a blueprint for that first. Okay, that's fine. But once I've found a blueprint, I'll be able to make that, which is pretty cool. So I've got all these new things, which I probably won't be able to fit. An EM grenade, bandages, painkillers, armor modules. Some of them are stacking, so that's cool. Oh, I just get more room when I need it. Oh, that's cool. Happy with that. Anything need a charge? Doesn't seem like it does. Maybe the Tooth Fairy will. Need loads of copper for that, though. Okay, I'll come back another time and get some more copper and do some bits and bobs because I've run out of scrap now. Forward. Playing Cataclysm while watching a stream is easier when the stream is not also Cataclysm. Yes. Oh, did I not make more boots? Thanks, guys. Oh, we don't have enough carbon. I've got no scrap. Okay. No boots for now. We'll have to do without until we've got more scrap. Continue. Doesn't hurt being kind. It looked like one of those classical puzzles where you had to guess the tile that doesn't have any hungry crocodiles underneath it. I have an idea, but beeped for Dana, of course. Of course we need the... the boots okay so we can use the grabber instead to make a path out of rocks run over to the other side really fast no i think we'll make a path i've got some insight for that a toxic shrimp is blocking your way you have to knock it out to get through very well so it doesn't have hmm doesn't have any armor or anything like that so it's 
It's got loads of health though. Grief. I'd like to stun it. The Tooth Fairy. There we are. At least it won't do anything back to me for a couple of turns now. And I'll keep incinerating it. Perfect. That worked really well. Victory! I got one lousy piece of sulfur for all of that. Oh, look at this. It looks like a big chessboard. You almost reached the control room. A strange feeling haunts you, as if someone was following you. We're almost there, Commander. You reached the control room. Yes, you had tons of idea on what to do with the horizon. According to Slug, you could turn it into a Death Star. Well, that was not what you had in mind. You came here to find a way out. Everybody else seemed to have some other plans, and you were tired of plans. You leaned over the reactor controls. It was hard to figure out the local interface. You never saw anything like that. That was freaking you out. Um. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to ask Honey how to work the controls. Well, shouting it, it certainly won't help you, she mentioned sarcastically. Have you tried turning it off and on again? You spend a few minutes trying to figure out that. You feel a slight chill in the air. Your feet were getting cold, but you still were working on the interface. It was getting even colder, but you concentrated on your task. The system blocked all your attempts to access it. It required some kind of a passcode or a key. Maybe a hardware rebuilt would help. You stretched your arm towards the cables that were linked to the back of the panel, but it didn't move. You tried to move your head around, but no, you were frozen. Verdana. You called your AI, but she was silent. You heard a voice. So convenient of you to leave scan traces behind. I would not find you without that. Great intellectual capabilities. You should be compatible. Only 50 more to go. And I'll get the full data unlock on my systems. You'll make a great impact to the colonization of this planet. It seemed like the stupid, well, the very clever android went mad and was collecting humans. You remembered now, Vadana told you about that. But you forgot, as always. Generation databases came with a special lock. The lock required a certain amount of living humans to be present in the vicinity of the databank. More humans, more unlocked data. This little detail guaranteed that the colonists would experience the same technical and cultural evolution as their ancestors centuries ago, but with a slight help. And you became one of the humans that this android was collecting, and you were frozen. Soon you passed out, but your biological body continued to live on for a very long time. Until one day, you died. Really? Okay, so I think that this is kind of the end now. Follow the SOS signal, find the bandit city, rescued Sid hacked the horizon with Vadana. You didn't ever really trust anyone apart from Vadana. In your mind, everyone had their own plan and their own interest. Those interests rarely matched what you wanted, what made you mistrust most people. Sid was just one of those, so you left him, and it seems that you left him to his doom. The android had his own plans, and one of them had a point about cryo-frozen intelligent humans, what you soon became. Next time you meet him, maybe it would be a good idea to play dumb. Hmm... Let's see what happens now. So this actually has 24 different endings. And we have one golden ending. So we've got truth number one, which is all about this guy. So we can learn all different truths. So what's next? You were sure you died, but it seems you didn't. In fact, you were back in the escape pod and the planet was just below you. You were brought back in time, except you remembered what had happened. You learned something. Something of great importance. The Blake AI was bent on an idea of collecting highly intelligent humans and he would do anything to keep you on the planet in his vicinity. He held great knowledge it was locked and he kept getting in the way. Was there a way to use him? What now? Vadana woke up. Commander, a curious message from the unidentified evil co-station has been received. Should I decrypt it? Mm. Read the message. Rate our game on Steam. No, not, not now. We're in the middle of a stream here. 
Oxygen was running low in the escape pod. Horizon was just below you waiting. It was time to choose. What were the options? A transmission arrived a few seconds ago. A request for help with direct coordinates. It could be a trap or could someone really be in distress? Or you could stay true to your quest, follow your primary mission and find the ancient generation database. On the other hand, you could attend to those matters later and follow the coordinates of your crashed ship. Maybe it was still in flying condition. Hmm. So this is what we did last time, was follow the unknown SOS signal. So we could do it, we could do the same and, and go better. Or we could do something else. Hmm. Track your ship's trail. You had tech on the ship that could prove useful for your survival on the planet. You uncovered the known location of the generation data bank. You could search for it now. So we could go straight back through to the generation data bank. I think I'm going to do that because I think that's... Okay, you activated the thrusters using all of what was left of your fuel. The escape pod lunged down towards the planet, roaring as it's entering the atmosphere. You dived through the atmosphere and crashed into the surface of the planet. You hit your head a bit, but that was part of the fun. A voice was heard from the outside. You're what you're doing here, my land. I'm going to blow you to bits. Get out of here and show your face. So I'm going to get out of the pod and greet the owner of the voice. A strange creature was standing before you. You're crazy. You listen to me. Did I finally find someone that understands me? Courage and planning are unpredictable. It's total insanity you can rely on. The small creature went off in a dance of joy. It seems now he's friendly to you. You know what? you got to check up with my master. He's a great lad and got the smarts. You all get on with him easy. Looks like the creature has left its camp and now joined your group. Also, he shared some resources. Commander... The route he is presuming for you to take seems the same as the one that is leading us to the data bank coordinates, she told, told you, Vadana. Set off on your journey. Part 1, Prime Directive. A group of pygmies was following you for some time already. It seems that they have cornered you. Talk them into having a party and quietly slip away. Well, you didn't really manage to make the party, but at least they started a fight with each other. You have some time to slip away. Oh, I've got the Zap Pistol Blueprint. Nice. I needed that. Get some eye in there. Two bandits are fighting over some loot. They've detected you. You have to make up your mind fast. Um... Hit them into each other. Both bandits got knocked out instantly and you looted their backs. That was a great choice. Carbon and copper. Very nice. Come on, give me the stuff. I've got some copper and some sulfur in there. I'm getting a bit irrational after such events. The desert was hot and full of sand. Sand in your shoes. Oh, sand in my shoes again. Gee. Okay, so uh, you got rid of the sand. We're ready to move on. Nothing else happened. Basically nothing. You decide to check if the base summoning text still works. So yeah, this game has 24 different endings. Okay, so we can still get into the base, which is great. Got some more scrap now as well. So let's see if we can make this this uh, zapper gun. Be useful, huh? 20 caramite, 100 copper. Hmm, maybe not. Don't know if I'll be able to make 100 copper. Oh, maybe. Yeah, actually. Cool. Yay, I have a zap, crystal, zap pistol. Nice. Should turn on the jukebox. Ok, 
Okay, so can we charge anything else up? No. Okay, that's fine. We'll carry on for a little bit. Get some more scrap together. See how we do. Continue journey. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. The desert was hot and full of sand. Sand in your shoes. Take off your shoe. No, oh, sit on a stone. I'll alternate it. Nothing ever happens. I don't know whether it ever will. You feel dizzy. It's hard to concentrate. What is that? Super, super mirage squid. I'm contaminated. Okay, it needs corrosion. Oh man. That's a very trippy, trippy looking squid. So I actually need to make sure I use my armor and shields out of combat. Because if I use them in combat, it gives the guy another turn, which is no good. Some bandages, but I'm not going to take them quite yet. Right. Cactus. Ooh, some oil. Very nice. This way to the o oasis, sorry, noted for Dana. This signal finds its origin here. This way, this way, shouted the small creature. Also, we're back in the jungle already, so we made quicker progress this time. There could be a possibility that his so-called boss has got hold of the data bank, Commander. The route we're taking is the same. So everyone thinks that that shrimp hallucination was drugs. I think it was just the uh, the heat getting to my, my poor protagonist there. So even this jungle is filled with danger. An ambush. An ancient guardian bot has locked his long range missiles onto you. You have to break it down so he doesn't fire. Okay, so again, it's a corrosion. And, uh. Ignition grenade? Yeah, let's go with one of those. Maybe slight overkill. I took him out in, in one shot, so it's good. So I've got some scrap and I've got some iridium. Uh, I want to take another shield module. And off we go. Okay, so a pack of shrimps was sniffing out your location. They seem to be drawn by your gadgets. Throw them a lockpick them a hack virus. I think a lockpick. That proved to be enough and you managed to escape. Oh look they're in love with the lockpick. What's up here then? Uh, iron again. Oh no I missed that. You saw a shrimp that was scavenging the wreckage of an old robot. There could be some loot of interest if you could chase the shrimp away. Okay, let's try it. No, oh, it's a really hard one. Grr. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him with my tooth fairy. Stun him for a couple of turns, and then I'm gonna take my corrosion gun, and then my normal blaster. Yeah, I didn't take any damage that turn. That was pretty good. Continue journey. Got some carbon and some sulfur, so that was all right. I'll remember to click on that this time. Oh no, I need a lock pick. Teleport to base. Need more lock picks right now. So we'll see how many runs we can do before midnight because I, I plan to sort of uh, wrap the stream up around midnight. And if we haven't finished, I may do a second stream. 
Uh, just get a few of everything, really. Okay, so make some lockpicks. Anything else that we didn't have? Do we need another grabber, maybe? Oh, you caramite for that. Ugh. And for hack viruses. Wow. At least we don't need too much. Any more grenades I can make? Booster pills, all that stuff. Jump boots need carbon. Okay, so I can make another grabber. I need some more carbon to make boots. Come here, boots. Okay, that should help us a little bit. If you hover over the item, it tells you how many you have. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Can I charge anything up? Oh, my Tooth Fairy still needs copper to charge it. The blaster, my shock bat, my incinerator, a zap pistol, needs a bit of iron. Uh, so I need a bit of iron and a bit of copper, really, to properly charge all those up. See if I can make some more copper and iron. I want as much stuff charged up as possible, so I've got as much uh, choice on my weaponry as possible. And onwards we go. Continue the journey. Well, I was useful back there. Oh, I couldn't get the lockpick chest. You saw a group of pygmies playing a strange game with a portable reactor. Maybe if you stop them, you could take the tech for yourself. Scare them away. That was mean. They don't have any shielding or anything. I'll shoot them with my gun a couple of times. Hmm. There we go, they're dead. Need to replace my uh, shield though. Ivy, whatever's in it. Oh, Keramite. Very nice. Can I go in there? I feel really dizzy. It's hard to concentrate. Hmm. Huh. Yet again. Ambushed. Uh, I need a corrosive gun, if possible. You dead. Yay! I forget that I can punch and wait for status effects to kill them. I just did a punch, thank you. Also, it's more fun to hit them with a gun. Don't judge me. Okay, so we're back in this room. It's over here, the boss is here. I can't wait for you to meet them. A strange looking building was towering before you. The small creature disappeared into one of the dark corridors. His voice could still be heard. Step into the darkness. What is that? You heard a voice up ahead. Commander, there's something in the dark. Vadana sounded scared for some reason. Are you scared or what? You're a bot. How can you be scared? Or oh, it's okay, honey. It's okay, honey. Good day, traveller. I'm Blake. No need to be scared. I don't trust you, Blake. Long have I waited for someone from the outside to come across me. The local population is not as promising as I was programmed to think. Programmed? I am an android created to serve and 
I am an android. That's like data off Star Trek. That's what he says all the time. Created to serve and guide growing human colonies. I hold a generation database drive in my so-called brain. We have landed on Horizon in 1562 AD, but not everything went as planned. There is an anomaly on the planet. A gravitational anomaly is blocking anyone from leaving Horizon. I have taken some time to research its origins. I had a lot of time to do so, but could not compose a solution. I may be an android that keeps all humanity's knowledge stored inside, but I am unable to gain access to it without a living human brain. Only one of your kind with a certain IQ level can unlock the data hidden inside of me. I knew it, he's a freak, Vadana loudly whispered in your ear. It even hurt a bit. Blake saw your facial expression. Do not worry, I do not need to eject your brain from your head, I just need for a certain amount of intelligent humans to be near me. This planet is corrupted by a force of rogue humans, but their intellectual capacity remains appalling. My primary mission is to bring prosperity to Horizon, and to do that I would need more humans to come to Horizon. But that could be achieved only if someone would be able to escape the gravitational anomaly and tell others about the planet. I presume you arrived here on a ship. I would like to have a look at its systems. Maybe I can find a way for it to use its some for us to use its remains to solve our problem. That would help you leave the planet. Commander, I have a very bad feeling about this bot. Nowadays, androids are all about breaking the laws of robotics. It's a crazy trend. They get humans killed and then make photos of that and post them to their intergalactical bot network. I'm feeling that this is one of those guys. Who else will go down shifting to a planet like this? Let's just lead this bot over to some desolate area and drop him there. I'm not joking, Commander, because it doesn't seem that he's willing to leave us alone. Okay, so last time, Blake... Truth number one was that Blake was not to be trusted. So I'm going to use truth number one to make my decision here. You opened your portable map and showed false coordinates of your ship. It's there. Well, let us move out then, replied Blake. Did he suspect something? And then, and then, I will format his brain, Verdana was telling you all the stuff she would do to Blake. We're on the right way, inquired Blake. Yeah, sure. Smile nervously, as if under pressure. No, yeah, sure. I do have a feeling that you're not being totally sincere, Blake was surprised, then added, that is probably the most modern way to conduct humour. The android tried to simulate laughing, and you ventured on. Part two, trick or treat. You found the strange girl catching desert carnivorous scavenger lizards. Those creatures were small, but rather dangerous. Apparently, they underwent a mutation on this planet. Their tails will make radiation filters. I'll make a fortune on water purification. Hmm... Are you sure you need those lizards? How are you going to sell the water in the first place? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, 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 sure, the stranger girl said. Suddenly a dark figure appeared before you. Help me catch the lizards the girl is talking about and I'll pay you back. Um, I'm out of here or let's catch them. Why share the bear skin before the bear is killed? Okay, so first you need a container. A transparent one? Or a regular cage that can hold some animals. I think the lizards are going to get out of that. I think they're probably too small. Because it's like the, they were doing their best to slip out of your hands. They seem slippery. They'll probably get out of that cage. So this one, I think. Then you have to figure out what bait to use. Tasty meal for some animals. Usually it's last one. Shrimp meat. No, I think the insect. Ah, oh. You don't look like a great lizard hunter, the stranger said. Maybe it was just not your day. What to do? I'll move forward. So if we get that again, we know to use insects. Get some carbon out of that. That was a shame. Let's go this way and then we'll dump him there and I will take over his systems. Vadana was getting robot thirsty. Bot thirsty? You had a little time. The local sand shrimps were out looking for food and it wasn't your plan to become one. Okay, I'll scan the area for dangers. You took some time to set up the scanner but didn't find anything special ahead. Or at least your device didn't tell you anything, but one of the shrimps caught your trail. Um, so this one... Oh, 
I'll incinerate it. And then I will, I'll do what Kate Leonard said and I will punch it. Yeah. Continue journey. Ah, the insects were poisonous. Yeah. Oh, of course, we needed to catch the lizards alive, didn't we? Uh, the cave was cool and quiet. You could see the exit far in the distance. Something was disturbing about it. Blake was sharing strange glances with Verdana. Is Verdana in on it? The cave was filled with various junk. Sounds of blasters and screams echoed in the distance. Left, left, you moron. Left is where your left hand is, you re... Prepare a white flag. Okay. A bunch of raiders were fighting a battle droid. It looked quite old. That didn't stop him from beating up the humans. One of the bandits was already injured. Hmm. I'll attack the raiders, I think. Hold on, mate. Are you sure? A voice surprised you. It was a hologram. My name is Mary Pete, and I would watch out for that bot. Okay, I'll listen to him and attack the droid. Hmm. Corrosion phaser again. I think I'm going to need more damage than just a simple punch there. So we'll blast him and then we'll punch. Oh no. Oh, he's dead. Cool. I need more um, armor and I need more shielding. You afflicted critical damage to the droid. It fell to the ground. Mary Pete was excited. Yes, the age of tyranny is at an end. Follow me. Just get some more uh, shield armor there, sorry. And did we have any more shielding? No. Take a painkiller. It slightly overheals me, it's kind of annoying. We'll follow the hologram. Uh, guys, if uh, the stream keeps buffering, you just need to refresh as much as you can. Sometimes it does that, it just has a little kind of, every so often, it seems to be every couple of hours or so, it just decides to have a little uh, blip. So excellent, I knew I could count on you, we'll accomplish plenty of great things together. The only thing left to do is download my AI from the robot's ship. Mary Pete seemed to be gleaming with joy. Who are you? The drone is my tormentor and warden. I was an entrepreneur back in the day. I didn't like the local authorities and got punished for that. They taught me how to fly. You know how it goes, a steep cliff and you fall down from it. That AI was my safety net, but an unexpected mishap occurred. I'll tell you everything, but later. Free me at last. Let's take a closer look. Um... No, we'll, ha we'll use a hacking module. Warning, C-class threat identified. You heard a voice from the modulator. Are you freaking nuts? Madonna yelled furiously. How come you uploaded a virus into the system? It nearly destroyed all my firewalls. Fortunately, it was a very old modification of my database that helped me track it. A virus? Who? Pete? I digress for a few hours to calibrate my scanners and you nearly whacked me in the meantime. Why you? That does it. I'm launching the diagnostics. Do your best not to get us killed while I'm away. Okay, we're leaving. Past a rusty pile of junk. Move on or examine it? Uh, examine. I got some scrap. Yeah. Scrap is good. The exit was ahead. You ready for anything? You stepped out of the cave and found yourself in the middle of a dark patch of land. At first you wanted to lead the android somewhere else to attempt to find his true intentions. But this place, it was nothing like you could imagine. So your ship crashed somewhere here? Uh, you have to play your bluff to the end. Commander, I would like to take some samples for further research. Asked Vadana. Okay, let's do it. Tell me where to dig. Oh, nice. While you were at it, you managed to uncover some useful resources. Vadana was not interested in resources anyway. She was all about soils, fluids and waves. Uh, 
trouble lurks within this dark land. An ambush. A toxic shrimp is blocking your way. You have to knock it out to get through. Stupid toxic shrimp. Blast you with my normal blasty gun. Um, I need something that'll do lots of damage. I should kill him. Bye bye. Oh, crude oil. Very nice. Ugh, seriously? Stop ambushing me. A bandit that's been stalking you for some time already has ambushed you. You have to defend yourself. Okay, so zap pistol. Oh, that was pretty good. carbon for that that's awesome what's next then commander it seems that something is in Badana just blanked out it did not look like a regular power issue something was jamming her signal uh, check the area for anomalies the strange man again just stand there I'm gonna do something different this time just stand there you still mashing the buttons punch him I need to battle the system this time. I can't hack my way out. Okay, so I need my shot. Zap pistol, I would say. Zap! And then probably my normal pistol. That wasn't too hard. I could really do with going back and making some more stuff like that. Um... Strange man was just in front of you. I can ask him politely to get the hell away from here. Wow, that little son of a... Oh my god, I have to really look over my language protocols. I've been hacked, burst out Vodana. I will go on a reboot. Should be fine after that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go back to the base and I'm going to make a couple of um, hacking modules because I've run out. I think I'll maybe do to the end of this run and then maybe leave it there, actually. I don't know whether we will get the golden ending, but uh, I think it's going to take quite a long time to go through the runs, like, multiple times. Unload. And I want to make a hack virus if I can, so, yeah, I have enough stuff for that. And that was really all I wanted. Don't want to spend too much time in the uh, in the laboratory or the base or whatever we want to call it. At least I was kind. But Diana was really surprised and totally forgot about Blake. These obelisks have a very strange null field. Large rocks peeked out of the ground, circling the area in the fashion of some Stone Age monument. What a splendorous, sp <laughs> splendorous dislocation, noted Blake. Another large rock was in the middle of the arena, and there were carvings on it that you could not even try to understand. You looked around the stone in the centre again. It was covered in strange circles that seemed to be a bit bent, just a tiny bit. And one of these circles looked like it could be ejected in some strange way. You took out your pocket iron knife and attempted to hook it out. A crude instrument, noted Blake. I'm going to ask Madonna to generate a vibration push to slowly shatter the obelisk. Or I could slip it out. I'll try and slip it out. Carbon. Uh, eventually you succeeded and the circular stone fell into your hands. Also, you managed to get some resources from the obelisk. At the same moment, you felt a light breeze on your cheeks as if everything was slowly coming back to life. The stone felt warm. It was warm and nice to hold. A comforting feeling. A unique artifact you got yourself there. Blake was genuinely surprised, as much as an android could be surprised. You stood still. For some reason, you could not move at all. You were scared? Or what was this feeling? The world around you started to swell. 
Knowledge. You search for greater knowledge that can take you away from here. You heard a strange voice in your head. It seems that he lost the ability to hear us due to an illusion. It's a very interesting effect, a rare one indeed. It would be wise to study it right now, you heard Bl Blake talking. Eventually you succeeded and the circlish stone fell into your hands. Huh? We're going back and round in circles here. Yeah, um, I don't trust Blake, I trust Vadana. The sinister feeling couldn't trick you. Focus on trying to drop the artifact to the ground. It was probably the hardest thing to do for a long time, to loosen your grip on the artifact. The stone circle dropped to the ground and the world cleared back to normal. It seems you have no nothing in common with the scientists of the old days that would live on experiments, noted Blake with a sigh. Wow, Commander, your life signal has changed. I'm picking up minor mutations in your cerebral cortex. Did you just become more clever? And that was not far from the truth. You could feel your grasp on the understanding of this world get stronger. Previously incomprehensible concepts clicked in your head at a whim. The artifact, in short, it boosted your brain functions by a margin, but cut your lifespan in half, exclaimed Vadana. We cannot let anyone get the hold of it. It's extremely dangerous. And you felt that way too. From your point of enlightenment, you could understand now there's nothing great about being so smart if your life is getting destroyed in return and a plan sprung to your mind. You descended into the cold hallway. It stretched fairly far. Um, Vadana was silent. So we're on part three now. Suddenly you heard a clicking sound. It seems that you've sprung a, sprung a trap. You were trapped in a cage that slid up from the ground really quickly. I might just wait this time and see what happens. Uh, soon a pack of pygmies led by a strange bot appeared. Master has found you food, the bot squeaked. As soon as the pygmies opened the cage, attack them. Okay, we'll go with, I think my fire gun It's good against pygmies. Um, punch them and they take a bit of damage as well. They're stunned at the moment, so that's pretty cool. They threw bolts at me, how dare they? They're dead. You knocked out all the pygmies and slammed the bots to pieces. The cage mechanism could be salvaged and the bot turned out to be a valuable resource. So that was actually well worth it. I'll take one of those. Does this not entertain you? Adana was shutting down all the time and you decided to make a quick fix to her systems. What inspired you? I'm going to say I was inspired by the panoramic view of the cave this time. Once you reached the end of the hallway, you saw a gigantic panoramic view of the cave and an idea struck you. Uh, hi there, Vadana. I've missed you. Um, but now all you heard in response was some background noise and static, but we were sure the idea was borderline genius. So it's going back round in circles a little bit, but with, with differences. Yeah, the pygmies are kind of cute. I just wish they weren't constantly trying to attack me. Uh, you encountered a strange shrine. It seemed to be made of glass and it had a door. Commander, it seems like one of those uh, Carnage TV combat booths that were so popular around the 215th century. They used to run a whole TV show with user-generated content from that. Madonna kept you updated. Sure, I'm going to enter, enter the door. Why did I do that? Uh, time to use my shock pistol. Time to use my normal pistol. Um, we're gonna use now. Shock bat. Punch. Oh, that was close. Oh my goodness me. I need to make some armor and stuff. 
take a painkiller as well. Painkiller, quick. Armor module. Got some iridium, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what have we got there? A side tank of the vehicle is locked. Maybe it contains solid fuel. Oh, I've got a lock pick. Come on. I need a hack virus for it. Oh man. I won't be I won't be there again when I come back, will it? No. Oh, I need to make some armor as well. So let's uh unload, make some armor if I can. Make a hack virus. Oh, I need more keramite, okay. virus and I wanted some armor uh, it was, no it was a shield shield or armor I'll make both actually if I get some more carbon I can make another one I think it's useful to have a few however can I think get level three support now? So get med kits and armor module mark twos. Handy. And I'm one point away from that one, and I can get that one now. So I'll get some more guns and stuff like that. Yay! I'll add those in. So that that's going to help a little bit. Forward. Okay. Uh, what's there then? Some iridium. I need a gravity grabber, but I have it. Yes. Extra iridium is always good. Well, I was useful back there. Oh, apparently I was, yes. A strange hologram appeared just as you passed the area. Entrance forbidden, it exclaimed. Judging by the fact that there was nothing else to stop you, it seemed that the hologram was just malfunctioning. and crack it. Uh, it turned out that the hologram was an AI that was programmed to scare away strangers from an area not designed for swimming. In any case, you deactivated it and salvaged the emitter. Oh, iridium. Nice. Okay. Two bandits are fighting over some loot. They've detected you. You have to make up your mind fast. Hmm. Hit the green bandit. shock bat him or I could shock pistol him. Oh, I only have one charge left. Mm. Blaster. Yeah. That worked. Good stuff. The red bandit was pleased that you helped him and shared some loot with you. That felt great. I don't know whether that matters either way. Said and done. So next time we'll uh, hit the Rad Bandit if we come through again. Although I did say this would be the last run. So you see an alienist stranger standing on a rock in the distance. He's shouting in a broken dialect. You, no come closer. It's trap. Ground moves. Eat you alive. Something strange is going on. Um, I know what is wrong. Sand shrimps. I'll leave him. This would be a fine place to hide it. Underground enough, noted Badana. Blake was still following you. He remained silent. Oh, do we bury the artifact or do we not bury the artifact? No, I'm going to bury it because it was dangerous. You buried the artifact in the ground. Nobody should get harmed by it now. Or well, we should get onto the Horizon Vault now if you still want to escape the planet, Blake said. You were about to go, but saw Blake is lingering. I'll catch up to you. Don't worry, I have some matters to attend. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, he's going to dig up the thing, isn't he? I should have kept it. You reach the Horizon Cave. Blake gave you a specific set of instructions. Reach the Horizon Vault and wait there for him. He would take time to come up with a plan for an escape, since you ditched all his other attempts. Seems legit. Deus Ex. 
you were passing the area you saw a strange trap, a crude construction as if built by children. Oh yeah, we've had that one before. Okay, pygmies. I'm gonna ignition grenade you. Punch you. And blast you. Look at grief. Uh painkillers! blast you there we go i didn't realize quite how uh, few hit points they had left or i would have punched them so yeah that was a, an annoying waste of painkillers booster pills i might take those actually mm, that didn't do very much did it uh, that's annoying Shield and armor. Okay, so it's this guy again. It's this shrimpy guy. Oh no, he never stopped us this time. You saw a mirage that reminded you of something very familiar. What could it be? Surprise, surprise. It's one of these guys. I'm going to incinerate you. And then corrode you. And then punch you in the face a few times. Okay, he dead. Yeah, Kate Leonard's like, he's for sure gonna dig it up. I'm like, yeah, he's so gonna dig it up. I shouldn't have chosen that, really, should I? You met a stranger with a sand shrimp. It seems it was his pet. He came closer and whispered to you, make a smiley face. Help me. It's fine, it's okay. Help me please, this shrimp has telekinetic powers. There's nothing I can do. You wondered why Blake would stay back there all of a sudden. He used to follow you all the way. A strange robot appeared before you. You will stop right here, obey master. You're the one who will obey. Mm. The corrosion phaser. Ow, he's quite strong. Um, and I'm running out of stuff. Tooth fairy. Keep him stunned as much as I can. Corrosion grenade. Shot back. Punch him. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was going to die then. I think we might need to go back and... Uh... Okay, an ambient noise was growing for the last few minutes, but you were ignoring that. But it was too obvious now. You saw a large holographic face of Blake in the distance. It seems that he unburied the artifact. You tried to run, but it was futile. You did everything right this time, but still no luck. What could you have done differently? Blake merged with the artifact and got empowered by it, and Blake seemed to be very anti-human on the inside, so you died. You once read a fantasy book about a war in a fantasy kingdom, and there was a ring that everyone wanted. You were confused by the fact that nobody ever tried to just hide the ring really, really far away so nothing could find it. So once you had the opportunity to test the theory for yourself, you did exactly that. But there were no androids in the book, and there was one here. Okay, so it'll tell me, hopefully, what I did wrong and if there's any truths. No, there were no truths. So we had that ending this time. So I think I am actually going to leave the stream here and uh, leave a bit of mystery to it, I think. You guys, if you want to play this game and see what the golden ending is and uncover all the truths, then uh, feel, feel free to pick it up. I think it's already out and you can pick it up on Steam or whatever. Uh, but that's as much as I'm going to do on this one, I think. So I hope you all enjoyed the stream. And if you did, remember that you can actually like streams while they're going on. So anyone in chat that wants to give me a like, please do. Uh, any of you watching the VODs, then please like as well if you liked it. If you didn't, then uh, let me know. I'll maybe play something different next time. But uh, I hope to see you soon. And in the meantime, please look after yourselves and keep being awesome.